Hi folks, good to see you. God bless you and love to, excuse me, love to everybody out there. My website's jasonbirdspreacher.com. You can get me on Facebook and Twitter. I hope that the other video has been a help to you. And I want to uh, just finish off now by talking about defending the Trinity. How to um, how to kind of ward off arguments against the Trinity at Hyde Park Speakers Corner by Mansour in particular and Hashim on the issue of Trinity. I'm going to recommend a book and here's the book. It's called The Trinity. A classic case of biblical Trinitarianism, Edward Henry Bickers Seth, and it's published by Kriegel. Edward Henry Bickers Seth, 1812 to 1906, was born in Islington, England, received his education at Trinity College in Cambridge, and he was pastor for many years and the Bishop of Exeter, 1885 to 1900. He is the author of several books and poems and hymns. The Christianity Today required reading and would serve as a refresher course in Christology for pastors. It furnishes conclusive refutation of all cults which reduce Jesus Christ to a created being. Prophetic Witness The author shows the complete sufficiency of the divine resources for every need. This book should find a place on every pastor's bookshelf. Dr. Walter L. Wilson. It is the only book in print, so far as I know, that describes in detail each of the persons of the Trinity. It presents in parable columns the marvellous deity of each one. This book has no competition. Gospel Herald. A valuable book for those who may have discussion with people who insist that Jesus Christ is less than deity. So, I would encourage you to get this book. Uh, go on Amazon. Don't forget, you can go on my. Uh, you can go on Amazon and get some books by me, where I've edited some books. Uh, one is Islam, Islam, and the Reformed Faith, and there is some wonderful resources that I've edited, where it answers some of these issues about the Trinity. Um, so please go on to Amazon and get some of my books. You can get them free. And some of them will help you on the issue of the Trinity and will help you in defending the faith. So the books can be bought for like two, three pounds. But if you want them free, uh, some of them are free. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about Mansour and his and Hashim on the issue of the Trinity. First of all, what I've noticed with with these Dower teams is they control the conversation. So they control the conversation. So you've got to think to yourself, when you're at Hyde Park, if someone is controlling the conversation, it means you're not going to get anywhere in the discussion. Because if it's a true discussion, there should be a willing to dialogue where both people can ask questions at the same time and have a true dialogue but if someone is controlling the conversation it means that you're not really going to get anywhere in that discussion you're not going to get anywhere in answering them because whatever happens they're going to control it and manipulate the conversation to the desired end where they're going to get to so You've got to ask your question, who's controlling this conversation? Is it an equal 50-50 discussion or is it that person controlling? And if that person is controlling, you're better off walking away. You're better off walking away. Because you're not going to get anywhere. Secondly, uh, with Hashim, Hashim is basically taking a few verses here. And because he takes a few verses here, he misses other verses. And it 
the Hashim and Muslim apologists have to be called out time and time again that Christians take the whole of scripture and the whole of scripture is it says that God is Jesus God became a man that's the whole of scripture so we have scriptures about his manhood and scriptures about his godhood so it has to be pointed out to the Muslim apologist that they're looking at it from his, an Islamic perspective they're interpreting our scriptures from an Islamic perspective so rather than let them critique you about the Trinity you have to turn the tide on them and say wait a minute you're looking at these texts from a Muslim point of view I don't agree your Quran isn't the Word of God and give some points why the Quran's not the Word of God and insist you're not looking at the, the Trinity until you look at the Quran because the Quran needs to be criticized because all they're doing is looking at the Bible from a Quranic perspective and they'll just have you battered all over the place because that's what they're looking at they're looking at it from a Quranic point of view so you might as well go to the source and say the Quran is corrupt the Quran is wrong and stop them riding their tracks from critiquing you and the uh, uh, critiquing the Trinity there's no point in entering a discussion with the Muslim on the Trinity when they're using the Quran as the authority and they're not sincerely searching the Bible for the true answer but taking bits out of the Bible to suit themselves so saying no we're not looking at the Trinity we're looking at the Quran because the Quran is not the Word of God and because it's not the Word of God you're looking at this in the wrong way so you need to destroy their authority and insist upon it and that's what Christians at Hyde Park are not doing secondly there are these philosophical arguments that people like Mansour bring up the philosophical arguments can be cut in two by two, two ways one is to stress the history of philosophy and say that in the history of philosophy there has been a debate between the one and the many philosophers for thousands of years have, have, have known that reality is one but yet it's many it's one but there are many parts and philosophers have debated this for centuries there is no one essence that has that does not have parts take a particle it has parts take a quark it has parts take any essence within the universe it has parts there is no oneness without parts philosophers have known this so even if the Muslim says there is only one God the still within that one God has parts within the one God God is love God is joy God is peace these are parts within the Godhead so the Muslim doesn't get away from this problem that philosophers have seen for centuries so it, it, it's it's a it's a it, 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 it's a conundrum and it, 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 it's something that philosophers have not been able to solve so the Trinity is resembling reality there's one God but there are three parts now when uh, people start to say well uh, if three people if the father rose Jesus from the dead the son rose Jesus from the dead the spirit rose Jesus from the dead how can these be three? How, the, how can there be one God with three wills? That's a mystery. I, I, we're looking at something beyond our understanding, beyond our mind. And I think that has to be stressed. Rather than try to get into the philosophical problems, is to say, no, it's beyond our intellect. We believe the scripture, and the scripture has revealed it. And this is what the scriptures say and a book like this will help you so I think what what um, what Mansour and Muslims are doing is they're pretending to be people of a book i.e. the Quran but really they're being rationalists they're being rationalist and so you could turn around to them and say well if we read the Quran the Quran doesn't even understand our faith it, it, it defines the Trinity in a wrong way 
So the Quran's not the word of God because it doesn't even get what we believe in a correct way. And go to, to, to that point and stress that point. But I think you have to undermine the Muslim authority so that the Muslims willing to read the Word of God with a humble heart and receive what the Word of God teaches in the Bible. Because you can't understand the Godhead purely by rationalism. It's not possible. And to try to wrap the Godhead in a rationalistic box because it doesn't conform to your logic is not is not is not uh, a biblical way of thinking so we don't really have to answer all the philosophical questions concerning the Trinity there are some philosophical questions that the Trinity actually solves for example why is society the way it is we're made in the image of God God is a triune God a relational God and so we are to be relational people. We're made in his image. It explains reality. That's one area that we can actually see an answer to why we're relational beings. So the Trinity has many practical implications for society and life and philosophical implications. But to get into a deep philosophical question about are the three wills or one will if there's one God is beyond our understanding uh, is beyond anything that we understand if we were able to go into a, 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 fifth, a 15th dimension maybe we would might be able to understand but we can't we only have a limited understanding so I would say to bounce with these philosophical questions with people like Mansour uh, is a dangerous place to be because you're in danger of becoming a rationalist rather than a biblicist. Those are my thoughts. Uh, so read that book. And uh, St. Augustine wrote a great book on the Trinity. And John Owen has written a great book on Trinity. So if you want a more philosophical discussion, read John Owen on the Trinity. And then you have St. Augustine on the Trinity. And this is a good book on the Trinity. And look up my books as well. All right. Those are my thoughts. I don't have all the answers, but those are my thoughts. God bless you and love to everybody. Take care now.